Hey, yo, what's up? Welcome to this little video. Um, <laughs> we're just jumping right into it. And by jumping right into it, I mean running away from the Rat King and uh, having him uh, chase after me. You know, classic stuff. Just real simple, classic kind of kind of stuff. <laughs> oh, no. So, as of right now, it is about half an hour away from the release of The Last of Us Part 2 Remastered. And, you know, I'm going to be honest with you folks. I'm excited for it. I'm ecstatic for it. The Last of Us is one of my favorite games. Specifically, The Last of Us Part 2. I haven't played the original Last of Us, <laughs> which might seem weird. Which, it, yeah, it kind of is, but you know, I've seen it. I watched playthroughs of it. I didn't have a PS3 at the time when it came out. And I have The Last of Us remastered, the PS4 version. And, uh, you know, I just never got around to playing the campaign. I put more time into the multiplayer than anything else. And I didn't even put all that much time into the multiplayer. But it was pretty fun. But I love The Last of Us Part 2. It is one of my favorite games. Uh, I would put it up there with um uh, although honestly it's probably beneath most of these games but uh disco elysium red dead redemption 2 uh the witcher 3 baldur's gate 3 uh i don't know what, what was some of my other favorite games bloodborne fallout new vegas uh am i enough of a hipster for you do, do i have to go through more games because i probably can hotline miami that's a great one hotline miami 2 also pretty good <laughs> and here we are the start of the glitch the start of all the trouble the rat king going there and i running away still terrified afraid of the rat king and what it might do to me but i know i know i'm gonna win and you want to know why that is because another one of my favorite games is dishonored and you want to know what i am you want to know who i am I am the fucking Rat King, alright? You know, many claim to hold the title of Rat King, and if you do, <laughs> you don't want to be around. You don't want to be around when I come for you. But you won't know when I come for you, because I am the Rat King. <laughs> uh, laugh it up now. You still have a throat to laugh with, but <laughs> uh, but no. Um, it is currently uh, let's see, 18 minutes away from midnight uh, before the Last of Us Part Two Remastered comes out, and I have been sitting on this clip since September 5th, 2022. So, you know, it's not super old, but it's pretty old. This is the oldest video clip I have on my console, my PlayStation 5. And, uh, you know, <laughs> I mean, I think it's pretty funny. I think it's pretty worth keeping because, I mean, you know, I'm sure this has happened to other people, but I was just so shocked when this happened to me, you know? Uh... I was actually live streaming while this uh, happened, and then I saved the video clip. And oftentimes, when uh, I'm like live streaming something, I have it so that my microphone won't be recorded in like any video clips I might save. Which is why I love the PlayStation, man. You know, like I, I don't know if you can do something similar on the Xbox, but. I, you know, I, I never used this feature for the longest time while uh, using a PlayStation 4 and even for a little bit on the PlayStation 5. But, although, I don't know, I think I was definitely streaming by the time I got a PlayStation 5, but I wasn't doing it very frequently. But I just love this feature where you can uh, just save a video clip and then also be live streaming. So you get like kind of two separate things. I have a whole series on my channel that I haven't posted. <laughs> I posted like maybe three episodes of and like two of them are unofficial episodes that I'm like, these are bad and I'm not going to save these. <laughs> but 
<laughs> anyway, the Rat King is just gonna chill while uh, I talk about whatever I want, and that's kind of what this video is gonna be, so I uh, hope you're looking forward to that. But, yeah, no, I just really love this feature, because uh, if you don't know, if you don't know me and my channel, uh, I play a lot of Hades, and all of a sudden while I was playing Hades, I realized, oh hey, I can really easily just save a video clip of, like, the short conversations that happen in the game, and then I can just, like, upload them to my YouTube channel for fun. And I started doing that, and my Hades clips got r relatively popular, you know? Like, uh, my most popular video has maybe 300,000 views? I don't know, let, let's see if that's changed or still the same or is it like just under 300,000 all right n hey hey phone now now's not the time to be messing with me like this all right oh okay yeah my my second most viewed video is 308,000 views my most viewed video Zagreus asked Hades which realm he would have chosen uh 443,000 views posted that a year ago uh, what, what's the exact date on that? December 15th, 2022. So, about, you know, uh, uh, three months and ten days after I recorded this, I ended up posting that. And, uh, yeah. I don't know. I, I just love it. It's just such an interesting feature. And uh, if you're wondering what the video series I was talking about, it's the Abridged Tale of Rainfall which is the first character I made for Baldur's Gate 3. And while playing through Baldur's Gate 3, I decided to just record absolutely everything, thinking I was probably going to edit it into, like, different clips or, you know, kind of do something similar with Hades. But instead, what I've elected to do is to just, like, edit it down to kind of, like, the essential bits. So I'll cut out, like, some boring combat sections or just, like, walking around and nothing happens or you know, various things that I don't think are very important or would be very good in a video. And then I just record commentary over it, kind of like what I'm doing right now. And uh, most of the time it's improv. I did like one episode that was like purely me uh, reacting to everything in real time and like making jokes about it and kind of being a lot more precise rather than just... <laughs> <laughs> starting up and rambling. You see, I'm laughing because of what I'm doing with the Rat King right now. <laughs> and you'll see if you go to the live stream when this happened, I don't know which one it is. It's going to be one of my older The Last of Us live streams, or The Last of Us Part 2 live streams. Though that's the only Last of Us game I've live streamed, so yeah, but... <laughs> I just, this was just so hilarious to me, and I couldn't believe that this happened. Because it, it's just such a funny thing. Because this is a terrifying boss. Like, I love this boss. This is, like, one of my favorite bosses. And look, it scared me. It scared me, because it started running. And, uh, you know, it's just, like, pretty freaky and pretty terrifying. But also, pretty fucking hilarious. <laughs> but, yeah, no, uh... I don't know, I just really enjoy having a PlayStation. I really enjoy playing video games, and I really enjoy The Last of Us Part 2. Now, uh, that may be a bit controversial, especially in this day and age. I mean, uh, it is uh, January 18th, uh, 2024, and, um, wow. <laughs> when, when I said that I had this video clip since 2022, that, uh, like, I was like, oh, that's not too far off, and then, you know, I mean, you know, you add three months to that, uh, and however many days, so, may, uh, say, four months, since it was only on the fifth day of September, uh, you know, that's, like, about, uh, a year ago, one year and four months ago, it was, like, that's crazy, I was 21 at the time, and now I am 23, and that is just a, uh, crazy thing but yeah no if you don't know uh the creator of this game neil Druckmann, uh kind of the head writer and director has supported some things that i feel at least personally are in stark contradiction to this game and the messaging of this game because you know while i'm sitting here laughing about the rat king just examining him up close because i think he's a really cool uh, boss like 
I love this game because it's ultimately about like hope, forgiveness. It's about violence and how, you know, uh, kind of depression and grief can lead you into doing terrible self-destructive things as well as just destructive things to other people in an attempt to deal with it or in actuality not deal with your grief and not accept what has happened and you know uh, a lot of people want to just boil this game down to revenge bad and i mean yeah you can do that for like a lot of games like if you take red dead redemption 2 Red Dead Redemption 2 is kind of just revenge bad, you know? Um, charismatic cult leader, bad. Um, uh, uh, Pinkertons and capitalism, bad. Wow, what a profound message, Red Dead Redemption 2. Thank you for sharing, you know? It, it's, it's also, like, that's also a game that's about forgiveness, about bad people learning to be good and learning to reconnect with their humanity and with humanity as a whole outside of themselves different people and i think it's a really beautiful expression of art and love and hope and it makes it very tragic when the creator of this game uh, neil Druckmann, is in full support of palestine and the terrible things they have done to Oh, I feel like a fucking idiot. I just said Palestine instead of Israel. I wish he was in support of Palestine. Then I, I, I'd be happy. The guy would have understood his own game that he made. Where, if you don't know, Abby is part of the WLF, which is kind of a metaphor for Israel. And they are unequivocally the bad guys. They invade the Seraphite Islands and murder them unnecessarily. And, you know... Uh, you might say that the Seraphites are, uh, the Seraphites are kind of a stand-in for Palestinian people, and, you know, uh, it is somewhat of a bad betrayal because the Seraphites are portrayed as bigoted, but, you know, I do understand that perspective, but I think also it's, you can take it much more as a general critique of religious extremism, because, you know, uh, we all know that you can't just look at a country and think that everyone in there is a monopoly. There are a variety of people with different beliefs and viewpoints. And, you know, irregardless of, you know, some bigoted beliefs people might hold that will never justify the murder and killing of these people who primarily are innocent, primarily are kids, you know? One of the main focuses of this game is on Lev who is a kid and he, you know, struggles to be accepted. And, you know, he's he's not accepted in, uh, uh, he's not accepted by the Seraphites, but he's also not accepted by the WLF, you know? And it's kind of like these two outsiders and, you know, both of these kind of flawed societies uh, coming together and bonding and, you know, realizing that, you know, it doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter where you come from, you can always form a bond with somebody. You can see the humanity in them, and, you know, you can look out, care for each other, love each other, and protect one another. And I think it's a really beautiful thing. And, you know, I don't know how you play this game and come out with a different interpretation than that. Because there's in no way that this game is about you know the unironic or i don't even want to say unironic but the like unequivocal support of murder and violence and killing you know it is a condemnation of that and it's very interesting how the game presents itself because like the violence in the game is fun you know the combat in the game is very fun and very satisfying and i have a blast with it but, you know, it's, uh, you could argue it's a bit of ludonarrative dissonance, but I don't think it is. I think that's kind of the point, is that violence can be a fun and cathartic thing when you turn off your brain and you forget the humanity of the people that you are killing. And that's why, you know, it's almost kind of like a meme on thing, where when you kill somebody, they'll call out the name of the person that you killed. And it's like, I really like that as, uh, 
as a way of humanizing the uh, the people that you were turning into victims because they are people you know irregardless of what faction they're a part of irregardless of where they're born what they look like how they act what they've done they are still human beings and of course you follow you know uh ellie williams uh abby a a anderson and um are levin yara given a last name they probably are but i cannot remember it off the top of my head uh but also, you know, you, you follow Joel. Uh, I can't remember his last name either. Joel Haver? No, that's a YouTuber. Um, Big Joel? Nope, that's a different YouTuber. Little Joel? Nope, that's the same YouTuber, but with a different channel. Um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, I, I might make jokes and make myself laugh because, you know, this is kind of an inherently silly thing. You know, it's silly to take a video game which is essentially just pixels money and time and effort of so many different people all to just entertain some people but like i don't know, I, I think i like to believe it's more than that i believe it's made to make people think it's made to have people process reality and you know think about what they believe in think about life their life how it applies to them how you know it can affect them in a significant way because that's something I've always loved about video games. That's why Fall of New Vegas, even to this day, is still one of my favorite games of all time. Because I remember playing that game, and I just loved the atmosphere of it. I loved the music. I loved the characters. I loved so much about that game. And uh, particularly when I was younger, I was playing it when maybe I was like 12 or 11 or 13. I was like in sixth grade. My... Uh, a uh, buddy of mine who was like in my uh, fifth grade class or something uh, was playing the game and I was like oh my god that's so cool and uh, there we go the rat king is back to fight me ho ho but no I remember playing Fallout New Vegas and not wanting to do an evil playthrough finding that I couldn't do an evil playthrough because I felt bad I felt, you know, genuine emotion doing bad things to these fictional people that weren't real. And I think that's the point of, uh, like, almost a majority of games is empathy. You know, it is understanding someone else's story, someone else's perspective, and kind of relating to that, but also judging it and critiquing it and seeing where they went wrong and how they could have done things differently to be better to improve their lives to improve the lives of the people around them you know and seeing their struggles and their triumphs and their failures and you know growing to love these people as hopefully you'll grow to love people in real life people you might know people you meet and uh you know i don't know that that to me is what games are about that's what this game is about and i really love it for that and it's just such a shame that the person who made this game missed the point and is, you know, supporting something that no human being in their right mind with a soul, whether you believe it to be literal or metaphorical, with a heart, with a brain, can think and believe. So, yeah, I don't know. This was just a short little video to say, uh, you know, I love The Last of Us Part 2, and I love people. Free Palestine, you know, take care of your loved ones, do what you can for other people, be a part of your community, form connections, form relationships, and, you know, be a human being. And try not to die. As hard as it might be, as tough as life might be, you can survive and if you can't then do what you can with the life that you have with the time you've been given because it can be cut off at any point it can stop at any time and you should love it as you love other people and you should love yourself in spite of your flaws because we're all growing we're all learning we're all in this together 
even if sometimes we're not. Sometimes other people are against people and people do terrible things and believe awful things. You still have to have hope for a brighter future because it's right around the corner and you know, you just gotta be there to see it. Anyway, that's all for now. It is 11.59 and I'm gonna spend $10 to play the remaster version of this game. And you can judge me for that if you will. I perfectly understand it, but you know, hopefully I can do more good with the game, live streaming it, talking about it, making videos for it, than you know, any harm I might cause by spending ten dollars to buy it. But um, you know, I don't know when exactly I'm going to put this out. But there's going to be a, a general strike starting on the 21st of January. Uh, going for a week to the 28th so do what you can you know uh buy what you can now make sure you know you stay safe survive and you know try to do the right thing in your life. and yeah that's all i have to say peace